Good morning. We are going to be in Daniel 6 today. If you grab your Bibles, get uh, flipping to those pages or on your phone, swiping, tapping, and then swiping to those pages, uh, however you get there. Have you ever taken your car in to get it examined, get it checked to see what's wrong? And you leave it and you're like, oh, I just know everything's going to be perfect with the car. I know I have to leave the glove box open to make the air conditioner work, but it's going to be fine. That sound, that noise, I'm pretty sure that's stock. Everybody has that noise. It's to make pedestrians safe so they know you're coming. <laughs> and you get there and they've checked your car and they come out and there's this little tiny plastic screw. And they're like, this holds down the floorboard in the back of the car, but if you don't fix this, the whole thing's going to explode. This is what holds this entire car together. And you're like, all right, how much is it going to be? And, and they tell you, hey, we're going to waive the, the fees, the checkup fee. And you're like, oh, no. Uh, we're going to waive labor. Oh, no, this is bad. Something bad is coming. And they're like, this screw is 1500 bucks, but we're, we got to do it. And you're like, oh, man, isn't it funny that... When you take that car in, you know there's faults with it. And today's message is called Faultless. So we're in Daniel 6, and we're going to be in all throughout the, the, the scripture here. And we're going to start in uh, verse 3. And it said, Daniel soon proved himself more capable than all the other administrators and high officers. Because of Daniel's great ability, the king made plans to place him over the entire empire. Actually, how it went, the king was number one, then Daniel and two other guys, and then 120 governors underneath. They call them satraps, think governors, when the, or administrators. Then the other administrators and high officers began searching for some fault in the way Daniel was handling government affairs, but they couldn't find anything to criticize or condemn he was faithful, always responsible, and completely trustworthy. So they concluded, our only chance of finding grounds for accusing Daniel will be in connection with the rules of his religion. Wow. That is an amazing account of a person to be found faultless in the eyes. Uh, if you have, who has a cat? There's a fault. Uh, so it's so easy to find fault, I'm joking, I love, I'm kidding, I'm, I'm joking. When your life is examined, will you be found faultless? Did you maybe cringe when I asked that? How does it make you feel? I'm gonna, ex you're gonna be examined, what's, what needs to be rooted out? That thing that maybe popped into your head, that mistake you made. Sometimes, uh, even when you leave an interaction, when you talk to somebody, you're like, oh, I can't believe I said that. Why would I say that? It's an examination. I felt like this. I felt this cringe when I was coming home from college. I had come over to uh, Bellevue Community College at the time. Now it's just Bellevue College. Uh, they, I, I, I left here depressed and broken and sad because I had been chasing after everything that I shouldn't be. And God used this moment to, to get a hold of my heart. And so I'm like, fine, I'm going home. I'm going home. And when I got home, I was like, I'm going to do the same things I did when I was over here. And then, but I'm home, so I will feel better. But the truth was, I felt horrible being at the parties. I wanted to fit in. I wanted to be with my friends. I wanted to be liked. And when I was, that wasn't fulfilling. I still felt depressed and sad. The truth was, I wanted to control my life. I wanted to be in control and not miss out on things. And what this did was it opened up my life to faults. These things that could be looked at and go, oh, that's not, that's not pleasing to the eye. That's not how God would want you to live. Those are those kinds of areas. And I, and I was quickly realizing those faults are what were causing the depression, the sadness, the, the, the disconnect with God. And I was like, okay, these things need to go. 
I was thinking about relationships that that needed to go either uh, with the opposite sex or or even guys that I hung out with that just were going in a different direction than I was. Venues or parties that I would show up to, places I shouldn't be, places that just, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to go drink. But then you go to a party and everybody drinks. Or activities or that value of being based on being liked. And so what this did for me is I started this thing of a daily examination. This is personal. Not every, I don't always tell everybody I'm doing this. I don't go on Facebook and I'm like, it's daily examination time. These are Brandon's faults. And I don't set the list. Top 10 lists of Brandon's faults. Uh, you're like, oh, I already have that list. No, don't share it with me. But even, I'm going to let you in uh, on this a little bit. This, this happened last week-ish, a week or two. Uh, I was walking in the parking lot, and I was having a moment with God. I was praying. I was talking to God, and I was like, okay, God, what, what's going on in me that you want changed? And it came very clearly, and it was, Brandon, when you are stressed, you hide. When you don't feel good, you hide. And I'm like, no, I don't. I don't hide. I'm right here, God. I'm talking to you. This is me here. And he's like, no, you hide on your phone by playing games or escaping on Instagram or something else. When you're in your car, you put on rock music instead of praise music because you don't want to deal with the emotion, the stuff that's inside that's going on. And so all of a sudden, there are these things that I was hiding. And so I found that when I did a self-examination. And what I love about self-examination, it turns into God examination. Because he gets to speak to you in that moment. When your life is examined, will you be found faultless? At this time, Tori and Joseph are going to take some cool packs around and give them to your kids. They're all masked up, gloved up, uh, and they will have these fun activities to keep those kiddos f uh, enjoying church. That's our goal. We want them to love being here. So Daniel found faultless in the eyes of these men. The high officers, they weren't having it. They wanted to set a trap. So they are coming after his religion. So they go to King Darius and they, with sweet words, it says, they go to him with sweet words. When people come to you with sweet words, pause and listen to what they're saying. Brandon, you look so nice today. Can I have a hundred bucks? No. Like when those sweet words come and they said, hey, Darius, you should have everybody only pray to you for 30 days. And Darius did not think of himself as a God. Most historians don't think that that's what he was feeling. He was trying to unify the area. But he goes, you know what? That sounds okay. And they say this, we all agree. They included Daniel, but they did not talk to Daniel about this. And guess what? Darius fell for it. Daniel heard the decree and understood the repercussions of disobedience. How many of you sometimes do something even though you understand the repercussion of disobedience? Me, right here. But when Daniel, in verse 10, but when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home, he knelt down as usual in his upstairs room, with its windows open towards Jerusalem, he prayed three times a day, just as he had always done, giving thanks to his God. When you are in trouble, where do you turn? When you are in trouble, where do you turn? Do we turn to God? Prayer? Praise? Good fellowship that edifies us and grows us? Some of you are going, yes, and I'm like, amen, let's keep that up. Or is it to friends or people who we think maybe an echo chamber? Oh, man, I'm feeling this way. Yeah, you should feel that way. Maybe it's to habits. When I was feeling certain ways, I was turning to escape, to my phone, to old music I used to like. 
You know what's interesting? This put Daniel in what I would call a not safe space. This put him in a dangerous place because he had lived in, in this place in Babylon for a long time. He had grown up in this system. He had understood it. He had been through different rulers in this system. So he had seen them try to burn people or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's what we talked about last week. He had seen what was up. This was trouble. He didn't turn to Darius to save him. Here's the thing. As a kid growing up, when I read Daniel in the lion's den, I always thought Darius was a bad king. Why, would, why else would he throw his friend into the lion's den? It was because when the king wrote something into law, it stood. Even the king could not go back on that law. Darius loved Daniel. Even when he wanted to save him, Daniel could have went to Darius, like, Darius, please. No, that's not what Daniel did. He went to his room and he started praying. You know, it, this, this really got me thinking. I, I feel like sometimes when we, myself included, but pastors in general, when we preach the gospel, we say, if you just turn your life to Jesus, it's all going to be good. And the, the honest truth is, it is. Because what God can produce is amazing. What we forget to tell you is, it doesn't mean you're not going to have trouble and trials and hardship. It actually says this, John 16, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Have peace in me is the key to this. Not the trials and the sorrow, having peace in God. Proverbs 18.10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong fortress. The godly run to him and are safe. Why would, the, why would we have to run to the Lord unless there's something to run from, guys? But we have a strong tower who keeps us safe. So at last, this is verse 16, so it says, So at last the king gave orders for Daniel to be arrested and thrown into the den of lions. The king said to him, and, and when I envision this, I envision a friend coming to Daniel. This was his trusted advisor. This was one of his leading men to run the kingdom. I imagine this close embrace, not a six foot stand apart that we have to do right now, but this embrace. And that's how I read this next line. May, the, may your God whom you serve faithfully rescue you. When you're in trouble, where do you turn? So he's going to the lion's den, and he knows what's coming, these lions, but he's faithful. He's praying. We actually have video footage of the lions in the lion's den. So parents, hold your kids. This is a little little intense, but we're going to play it. Ooh. Oh. 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 Ooh. 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 So, okay. I might have got my video mixed up. That was not as scary as I thought. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I will tell you the truth, though. When I found this, this meme, I played it for my wife and my kids. And for about a month, I walked around the house, do it, like, just, just busting that out. Like, ah! like okay, sorry. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. The lions were not cute singing lions. These were real man-eating killers, uh, and it goes on to say, in verse 18, then the king returned to his palace and spent the night fasting. He refused his usual entertainment and couldn't sleep at all that night. Very early in the next morning, I'm assuming like 12.01 a.m., the king got up and hurried out to the lion's den. When he got there, he called out in anguish, Daniel, servant of the living God, was your God whom you serve so faithfully able to rescue you from the lions. You know what I always thought was interesting about this story? You don't hear much of the fret of Daniel in the lion's den. You hear the story of Darius. 
in his pleading with fasting and no entertainment. He turned down the things the king would turn down. It's pretty quiet on Daniel. Do you know why? His faith was secure. His rest was in God. He knew trials and sorrows and difficult things would happen, but his trust was in, a, was in the God who saves. And Daniel's response in this is beautiful. It's amazing. Daniel answered, long live the king. My God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouth so that they would not hurt me for I have been found innocent in his sight or I have been found faultless in his sight and I have not wronged you. Oh, and a side note, I didn't do anything to mess with you either, your majesty. There is something about living a life that is faultless that is amazing. It's one of those things where it's, I'm not going to let things trip me up. I'm going to turn to God when I should. I'm going to trust him when I've turned to him that his best will happen. So in that story I started with, I had been going to parties and I, I was kind of just doing the same thing, but not in Bellevue. I was back in, at home in Yakima at the time. And I, I just still felt all these faults and, and I wasn't doing the right things. And God helped me shut the mouths of lions. And he started, he, he sent somebody to bring me to a youth group. And at that youth group, I started to lay down those broken things that I had chased, those faults that I had chased, those things that I thought would fulfill me. I started to lay them down because I saw that I wanted to be faultless. I wanted to, to have a new life in Christ. The old has gone, the new has come. And this leads me to the third point. And this is a tough point. Are you willing to die for Jesus who gives true life? You're going, Brandon, how does this have anything to do with faults? This has everything to do with it. This has everything to preparation for who God wants us to be. It actually, um, in Galatians 2.20, it says, My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You know what? Sometimes when I say I want to, you have to die to live for Christ, you're going, do I really have to die? Do I have to give my physical life to, some people do. They're called martyrs and it's happening even now in our world. There are people who are dying for the cause of Jesus. We have it very comfy. We have it very cozy. So if you ask me, do I have to die for this? And I go, I don't know, but maybe. Be in a place that you would be willing to. And then as you walk this out, be crucified with Christ. It actually says this in Luke 9, 23. Then he said to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Other versions say, give up your life. Take up your cross daily and follow me. This is a choice every day to live a faultless life, an examined life of putting down those things that would easily entangle us. Even this week, uh, last week, er mid last week, late last week, 1 Peter 2.24 from our Bible reading plan. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, you are healed. Dying to my flesh leads to a full life in Christ. These verses all point to that. And I love that about God, that he is consistent with his messaging, that we need to lay these things down. And when we do die to sin, 
we die to those faults, we die to those things, it does something to the people, it does something to us, but it does something to the people around us because you look very different. It actually goes on to say this in verse 25, then King Darius sent his, this message to the people of every race and nation and language throughout the world. Peace and prosperity to you. I decree that everyone throughout my kingdom should tremble with fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and he will endure forever, amen. His kingdom will never be destroyed and his rule will never end. He rescues and saves his people. He performs miraculous signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of lions. Whew. Darius doesn't even believe yet. <laughs> and those are the words that are coming that he's sending to the entire nation. When your life is examined, are you willing to die for Jesus who gives true life? We're gonna pray. Would, can we all just stand? I, this is a standing moment. What faults in your life needs to, need to be examined and died? They need to die, not die them like a shirt. They need to die. Those things, maybe, I, I, maybe it's one thing or two things, or some of us were like, it's 15 things. That's okay, you're in good company. But we are the type of people that bring those things to Jesus and we lay them at his feet and go, God, I need help with this. And that's what we're gonna do today. So today, if you can think of a fault in your life, something that you have examined and it needs to go away, would you just raise your hand? My hand is raised. There are things in my life I need to stop hiding when I'm stressed or nervous. Some of you got your feet up too. I like, yes. Let's pray. God, you are a God who examines us. And God, we want to be found faultless in your eyes. It's great to be found faultless in men's eyes, but God, I wanna be found faultless in your eyes. So right now, God, I pray against jealousy. I pray against pride. I pray against inappropriate relationships, those relationships that should not be and need to be done. I pray against the idol of busyness. I pray against drug use or medicating in some fashion to feel an anxiety or depression or those things that are internal. God, I pray that we denounce those things. We, we cast them at your feet. Self-reliance, God, let us not be people that rely on ourselves. God, anything that would hinder us from having a deep relationship with you, God, we cast those things at your feet because we know that you are a God who shuts the mouths of lions. You're the God of the miraculous. You rescue and save us. Your kingdom will never be destroyed. God, you will endure forever. God, help us be found faultless in your name. Amen. One more prayer. You may have just been praying for that last one, but you've never accepted Christ. You've never made that initial declaration of who Jesus is this acceptance of this amazing gift. He died on a cross for our sins to fix a really messed up, broken relationship. And he goes, you know what? Old sacrifices and coverings aren't gonna be enough anymore. I'm sending my son. So that's why Jesus came to fix that issue. So if that's you today, would you just put a hand up if you wanna make that first initial step in relationship with Jesus, if that's you today, and if that's you online also, we're gonna to pray together. So everybody's heads bowed. Would you repeat after me? Jesus, I give you my life. I confess that I'm a sinner and I need you to rescue me. 
Help me follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. I love that. Welcome. Woo! I'm excited. I love this simple thing is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. And this is, this is what we believe. It's such a simple but really hard to believe exchange. And so if you did that today, would you do something really important for us? Would you go fill out that Connect card? And on the Connect card, there's a button that said, I made a decision to follow Jesus today. Would you do that for us so that we can get in contact with you this week? Have a great day. Be blessed. What a good word. Thank you, honey. Uh, so if, uh, if you have any prayer requests, uh, we also want to know about those on the Connect card. The staff uh, meets together every week and prays for every single one of them. So uh, we want to partner and believe God with you in prayer. Uh, and then also we do have Kids Church videos um, right on YouTube. So if you are meeting us uh, online today, um, if you just scroll down on the page, you'll see those videos are right there at the top uh, for your kids to enjoy. And while you are on our page, please like and subscribe to it so that way you are notified of any video that we upload, <laughs> we'd like to be in contact with you and we will see you next week.